All right, everyone. Um, figured I'd make a quick video for you on replacing the thermostat on a uh, Kawasaki Mule 4010 gas engine. Um, I had problems finding this video myself, uh, and uh, I could find one for diesel engines, but couldn't find any for a gas engine. Um, so it's not that hard of a replacement, um, but just figured I'd you know, contribute back to the uh, YouTube community since I use it a lot, and uh, went ahead and filmed myself doing it. Um, hope you enjoy, hope it helps somebody out. Um, just know that this is one of many steps to take if you are experiencing overheating issues. And in fact, in my case, it actually was not the fix. Um, so uh, my uh, thermostat might have, might have been okay. However, it's a cheap part. It's very easy to do. So it's great to just get it done, rule it out, and you know you don't have something that will fail uh, soon in the future since it's brand new. All right, let's get into it. All right, so on a Mule 4010, this is a gas engine. The thermostat, and I'm on the uh, passenger side, the thermostat is right underneath this uh, coolant hose. Let's see, I'll get some better light. It's right in here, all right? So there are two bolts to take off to get to it. One down here. Oh, there's one down there. Sorry for the bad camera work. One down there. And one right there. Um, so what you'll need to do is remove this coolant hose. And you probably will have coolant spill out. However, on mine, there was no coolant, just air which is an in indicative of another problem uh, that I've got uh, air lock happening. So that's also something that I've got to work out. And that's what this bleeder cap here is for to get rid of. So once I finish this repair, I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna be bleeding the air out with this cap. But uh, all you have to do is undo this hose clamp here, which I already did, pull this off. When you do that, have, um, I have a catch pan. I had it ready to go, assuming that coolant would leak out, but <laughs> I got none. Um, I also use absorbent pads just to help with the splash, keep it clean. Uh, but again, there's one bolt, and the second one is right down there. Uh, 10 millimeter, and uh, you can see the coolant down in there. Um, and it's just gonna pop right off. The new one, should have a gasket if you get a good kit. Um, this is the kit that I got. I believe I ordered it. Oh, it'll show right here. Uh, ATVWorks.com. But I believe it came off of Amazon. It came with uh, the thermostat itself and a gasket, which is a nice little all-in-one package. And uh, if you're looking on Amazon, that's the part number for it, X003TSMUIV, at least that's for this box. All right, so now I'm gonna get in there, take the gas, take the thermostat out, and uh, switch it over real quick. By the way, I'm pretty sure the water pump is bad on this as well. Nothing's really been replaced on this. It's uh, 14 years old and things are starting to uh, act up. So uh, the water pump is a nightmare to replace on these. And it's mainly because there's a cowling in the way for I believe the clutch and drive belt assembly. And you have to remove the cowling to get to one of the four bolts on the water pump. And to do that, you have to take the whole clutch and everything off, I believe it's the clutch. And it's quite the project. Um, so I am taking it to a uh, Kawasaki dealer to have them do the water pump. They quoted me about three hours of labor, it's not terrible. It's still tight. I can get it on there, but I'm not gonna be able to back it out. All right, guys, best way for this is going to have to use a wrench. 
a dealer ratcheting wrench. They do have one. 10 mil. So, ratcheting wrench, if you don't have one, these things are awesome. I actually just got something. Okay, starting to get some coolant coming out of the thermostat housing, so uh, that's where my catch can is gonna come into place. There we go. All popped right off. Bunch of coolant came out. Now when you, uh, when you do this, you're gonna need to uh, keep your coolant filled up afterwards. You're gonna run it, bleed it. There's plenty of uh, stuff online about bleeding, bleeding everything. Uh, but you're gonna need to keep topping off your tank. All right, so that's the housing. That's the old thermostat. The gasket is still on there. There it is. Taken off. Right, let's see. If we get in there. All right. So much for my absorbent pads. They're doing a little bit. So that's gonna need to be all cleaned up. And same thing. In here, there's actually not much of a gasket left. Oh, there we go. All right. This is still the old thermostat, but one thing that I wanted to mention is um, the orientation of this thermostat when you put it back in. Uh, there's this little um, piece here that looks like it's almost like some kind of little bleeder or bypass or relief vent or something. Um, and so that got me thinking, oh, well, shoot, darn, did that, is, should I have paid attention to the orientation of the thermostat when I pulled it out of there? And um, the, uh, the, what, the way this came out, this uh, little uh, relief vent, or bleeder if you will, was at the top, the 12 o'clock position. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the new one. All right, so the gasket's baked on there pretty good. It's kind about to get off. So a couple tips. Um, this is where I'm at right now. So, so you can see I still have some uh, remnants of the gasket, the darker areas. Um, and so uh, tip is to use like a paint nine in one a scraper uh, to get some of the bigger chunks off. You do need to be careful, don't get aggressive. You do not want to gouge the metal, create any uh, major grooves that would stop your gasket from sealing well. And then for the finer stuff, use a razor blade. Again, be very careful, S you know, light pressure. Try not to cause any gouges or, or, or things like that. I believe very, very small fine scratches aren't the end of the world, um, but you definitely don't want to cause any, um, you know, gouges in the metal. And uh, if you do damage the metal, then you'll probably need to put some kind of gasket sealer, gasket maker along with your gasket to keep it from leaking. All right guys, here's my finished product. Product. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Um, and it's nice and clean, nice and smooth. There's a little bit of gunk still at the bottom. I just couldn't get it off without damaging it. Um, luckily, uh, the removable housing is easier to clean However, um, I had some stains on mine that will not get off. And uh, a little trick you can do is even use a little brake cleaner on it. Still would not come off. So, you know, that's very smooth. There's no um, uneven surfaces. It's just stained. Just like the outside here is kind of stained. So at this point, I'm just going to roll with it. I think it'll make a nice tight seal. And uh, don't be afraid to wash this in water, this part, especially if you get a bunch of little gunk in there. You, you don't want that in your cooling system. So rinse this out with water. It's fine to have a little bit of water in it. Um, you can get put water in your cooling system. All right, so we're going to put the thermostat in. And uh, we'll put this gasket on. Uh, I did grab some thread lock uh, because I noticed on the bolts that came out, uh, it looks like they did have some kind of thread lock on them. Let's see here. 
Um, yep. And uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. It's pretty pretty deteriorated, um, so I'm gonna put a little extra. I'm using blue removable. Um, doesn't need to be anything insane. All right, guys. If you got the same kit I did, it has a rubber gasket on it. That is not correct. Do not try to install it with that. I don't know why it has that. All you need is the um, actual gasket, the paper ones. There's no gasket needed on the spring side of the thermostat or the engine side because it's actually recessed in there. Then this gasket um, just sits on the, the front here. Okay, so remember we're gonna put that little uh, bleeder or relief vent there at the top because that's how the old one came out. Very good. And rather than trying to get this to stay on there magically, we're gonna thread our bolts through the housing, have this hanging on the bolts, put our thread lock on so it's all ready to go. Actually, we'll just do the top uh, with the thread lock and then we'll feed the bottom in. That way we don't have thread lock kind of getting smearing all over the place. When you apply thread lock, don't go crazy. I used to go crazy back in the day. You don't need much, just a drop and it'll kind of spread itself. All right, so we got the gasket on the removable housing side. We're gonna put our top bolt in, careful to not drop the newly inserted thermostat. It is just sitting in there, nothing holding it in there, so I don't wanna drop it and damage it. One thing I didn't mention, but I did, was just look inside uh, past the thermostat where it sits. Make sure you don't have debris in there from all your scraping and cleaning. Try to get everything out. As you just want to see clean coolant. If you need to, take a, a, a paper towel and kind of absorb as well as um, soak up debris and just push it out. It's always better to spill more coolant and get the debris out than to risk, you know, extra gunk just floating around in your system. By the way, if you didn't already know, the top bolt's really long and the bottom bolt is short. That scared me for a second, but then I just looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, that's, that makes sense because the top bolt sticks out way further and the bottom bolt's really flush. So we're gonna put just, you know, that is probably even too much right there. I'm trying to spread it around. You don't want it dripping. All right. All right, got it lined up and got it to bite. So I started it in. Gasket's looking good. All right, so I wasn't able to find a torque spec for this particular thermostat, but I did find one for another ATV thermostat housing. There's 14 foot pounds. But it also cautioned that the housing or the bolts shouldn't take much more than 14 and it could snap a bolt, cross or uh, strip it. So um, just be very careful. I wouldn't even maybe do 14 foot pounds, just get it nice and tight. I will say that it was tight when I um, took it off. By the way, I saw, it's called a jiggle valve. A little uh, metal piece that can jiggle at the top and it does go to the top of the thermostat. So we were correct. Um, okay, so my housing's bolted back on, nice and snug. And basically all we need to do is reconnect this hose and uh, start bleeding the air out. All right, also make sure you keep this tank full. And unfortunately I did not. It drained below the um, the uh, tube down there, so I probably got more air in the system. I'm gonna fill it up now with coolant, and then when I run it up on an incline, I will um, bleed it and try to get all the air out. 
All right, guys. I was bleeding the air out, and uh, see all that steam coming out of my bleeder vent. That confirms my suspicion, which is that my water pump is bad. Uh, which is right under, right there. Oh, sorry, let me adjust the camera. Right there. That big hose, careful. This pipe is very hot, it's part of your exhaust. Do not touch that. But this hose, right here, is your uh, return, I believe. Um, and if that's hot, which after you run it, and it gets up to temperature, and an overheating light comes on, a fan comes on, if that's really hot, and then you feel this hose, particularly, not necessarily here, because the steam is gonna heat that up, but down here, this is your return line. If this is ice cold, that means the pump is not circulating. Now, it could be a bad water pump, or it could be a bad belt um, in your clutch drive assembly because that is responsible for turning the water pump. Uh, I'm gonna replace the water pump and the belt at the dealer because that is a nightmare I do not want to get into. All right, best of luck, guys.